Welcome to the Mentor Engineer. In this video, I'm going to show you a way that you can make me cringe. Okay, so we're going to talk about gussets. And gussets are one of those areas where I'm just like, ooh, this is so simple. Why do people keep doing it wrong? And it makes me sick. All right, so let us look at a, a cantilevered uh, beam system right here. Let's say it's uh, like a street light or something. And we have a, a square tube butting up with a, another square tube. Now, as you can imagine, I load it here. It's going to be a cantilevered beam and then a, uh, a constant moment cantilever beam all the way down to the ground. All right, but right here at this joint is where it obviously causes us uh, problems. Now, the, the, the cause right here is stress flow, and it's, it's everywhere. I mean, we're just, uh, stresses need to change direction, and when you change it 90 degrees, that's it's hard to do uh, without uh, extra pieces of uh, steel and uh, extra design time. Okay, so I am going to show you uh, a couple different ways to make this joint better and one that I really hope that you don't do because it makes me cringe. Okay, so if I look uh, closer at this area right here, here's what I'm, I, I would want to see. All right, I'm going to have this tube here and it's going to have its wall and uh, I want to have it. Uh, transition to this one. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm actually going to want to set this tube just a little bit higher so that I can get good stress flow. So the top of this vertical tube is going to be right here and I'm going to have my dotted lines. Okay so when I think about stress flowing it's flowing in this the top of this beam very nicely. It's all uniform, it's all going. You've seen this on an FEA plot where, man, it's just it's just going smooth. And all of a sudden it comes to this tube and there's nowhere for it to flow. So we're gonna change that. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna cap the end of this plate. And we're gonna use that with the same thickness as this tube, if not thicker. And then we're gonna come back and fill this spot up with weld. And now I have a nice path for my stress to flow through this joint all the way back here to this back wall. And as it goes through this plate, it's actually gonna distribute to the sides of this beam uh, very nicely and you're gonna have a great transition. So do that. Another thing you can do is actually have this plate come over and cap this one but then you have to worry about different uh, stress transitions with um, transverse welding and stuff like that. So that actually may have more complications than it's worth. So I would do this. Uh, all right, so if I have the room, I can get down in here and weld this, weld another plate down there. I want to do that. All right, and there's a very specific way you want to do that. You actually don't want to line it up with the material at all. It's kind of weird. All right, so uh, I'm going to put in a fillet weld right here. All right, and I want to actually have my plate come down to the toe of this fillet weld right there. Now, you'd think that's kind of weird, but it actually makes the stress flow great. Uh, so I'm going to put a fillet weld right here because that's likely the only place I can get in with a welding torch is coming down right there. And keep in mind, this, this actually has to be quite a big tube to, to do this. All right, and I can see that my stress flow will flow through here, come down here into that weld and into that plate. And it makes a nice smooth line. And that's what we're looking for. Stress flow is like water. Uh, if, the, if there's enough material and the stress flows, your water is nice and calm and clear on the top. Uh, as uh, it gets shallower and moves quicker, I'm going to see a lot more hot spots and a lot more motion in, in water. So uh, that's why we say stress flow flows like a river. All right, so nice, even stress flow through that material. Okay, now if you can't do that, uh, 
you're going to have to look to gussets. So let's redraw this and look at some gussets here. All right, now the first thing, and this is what's going to make me cringe, is I come in here and see a gusset of that nature. It may not be exactly that profile. Uh, but if I look at the end here, I see a tube and I see another tube and that gusset is centered right, right in the middle of the tube. Don't do that. It makes me very upset, okay? Very upset. All right, there's no reason to do this. All right, so first of all, uh, you, have, you have nothing behind this gusset on this plate to take load. It's just gonna bend that plate. It's already your highest stress surface right there. Why would you add another plane of stress there? So don't do that, okay? It's just dumb. You're gonna push up, you're gonna bend that thing and it's already bending in another direction. Don't do it, stop it. All right, so the next solution, and I like this one somewhat better. If I go in here and actually modify this a little bit, um, my tube actually has a radius corner. All right, so what I can do is go in here and add a gusset, and I can weld right back in here where that, uh, that uh, J bevel would be, and do the same thing over here. And I at least have something on both surfaces where I'm pushing directly into a wall behind it. Much better. Good job. Give yourself a round of applause for thinking of that all by yourself. Okay. And that's good. It's better. It's not the best. All right. The problem with this is that you still have your highest stress right on that tube on that outer surface. And you've added a lot more uh, area moment of inertia with that gusset uh, and drastically and that's that's gonna put a hot spot right here especially right there it'll be a lesser one right there uh, and that's uh, no matter what you do you're still gonna have that if you drag this down you're still gonna have it in fact almost anything you do is still gonna have it but we can minimize that as much as possible and the way we do that is by placing the gusset outside of the beam, or outside of the tube, not on the edge of the tube. All right, so we're gonna wanna start with our gusset and it's gonna go on the side, each side of the tube, on the outside, and it'll go right down here because this is what, it's the neutral axis, and when we pick that up, we're gonna have a stress concentration at the end of that, but if it's on the neutral axis, who cares? All right, so we're gonna bring this down and it's gonna go this way down this beam a lot farther than it will down this way. All right, and we'll round that up. We're gonna bring it down to the edge of the tube and we probably wanna do so at a 30 degree angle or so. Uh, it doesn't, wanna, doesn't need to be very wide. You know, 15 to 30 degrees is probably where you wanna be. And right as you get here to this edge, you're gonna wanna make it flat for just a little bit. You're going to make a nice, smooth transition. You're transitioning uh, great into the, uh, the radius area. You're going to have a little bit of a, a lateral weld there. And you're going to, have, you're going to uh, be increasing your section modulus without uh, a dramatic increase in your area moment of inertia. And I could go into a whole uh, video on that as well. So I won't bore you with that here, but that will probably come out pretty soon. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to start uh, going back on our 30 degree angle here. And then we're going to make our transition here and we're going to radius that back up and go to our, our point. Now this one doesn't need to be as, uh, as critical as this one. This one is trying to get that in there. This, this, this whole tube, it just acts differently. I, I, I can't explain it very well, uh, but when you look at it in FEA, it's just not a problem. So uh, a lot more forgiving on this side of the equation than on that side. All right, so that is how you make a great gusset. All right, don't make me cringe. I don't wanna have to find uh, your design, know that, oh my gosh, you watched this video and you still did that. Uh, so I implore you to uh, make your gussets as much like this as you can. 
and do it every time. A lot of times this will save you even having to do any FEA on it uh, just because it's, it's such a great uh, design. All right, well, thank you for watching this episode.